Hello everybody and welcome to your very first lesson in ABS. In this video I will be going over integer rules and there is a second page for the set of notes and on that second page of notes I will be going over order of operations and the distributive property. Let's get right into it. So we start out with integer rules and you can see here there are a few integer rules. We've got adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, and the absolute value rule. So I'm just going to take these one at a time. So start with adding. It's about the simplest thing we can do. If you add numbers together that have the same sign, we add them and keep the sign. So for example, number one here, you can see we have three plus five. I want to make sure it's absolutely clear that this 3 is positive, but we don't ever write a leading plus sign. Only if it's a negative sign do we write it in front. So 3 plus 5 is 8. We add the two numbers together and keep the sign. And again, we're not going to write the plus sign in front of this 8, but the answer is 8. Similarly, if they have the same sign, as you can see here, They're both negative. We add the numbers, 3 and 5, we get 8. But since they were both negative, our answer will have a negative in front of it. Now I hear you. What if they have different signs? Okay, well, hang on. If they have different signs, we subtract the two numbers and keep the sign of the bigger number. So, for example, number 3, we have uh, two, a negative 2 plus 3. So we can think of it as 3 minus 2. I always subtract bigger minus smaller in that order. So 3 minus 2 is 1. And it'll be positive because the sign in front of the larger number is positive. And for number 4 over here, we have negative 3 plus 2. So we can just look at the number 3 and 2. So I would say 3 minus 2 is 1. But since the larger number here is 3 and it had a negative in front of it, the answer will be negative. All right, so the uh, subtracting rule here, we have add the opposite if needed, follow rules for adding. So for example here with number 5, you could just do the 6 minus 4 is 2, but you could also think of it as 6 plus a negative 2, right? Turn subtraction into addition and add the opposite of this number. So that's one way to look at it. And since these have opposite signs, like we did over here, we can just sub uh, subtract 6 minus 2 is 4 and take the sign of the larger number would be 4. So we can do that for all of these. We can say this is 2 plus a negative 6. Or if you know the answer is negative 4, you can just do that. Or we can do the subtraction or the addition rule with different signs again up here. So the addition rule would be 6 minus 2, and then we take the sign of the larger number. So again, we can do these with all of this. We can say here this is negative 4 plus a negative 7, which would be negative 11. They have the same signs, right? There's a negative on the 4 and a negative on the 7. So we can just add the 4 and 7 together, get 11, keep the sign of both of them. And we can go do this so on and so on. Um, I like these last two examples because students often get tripped up in when uh, adding, or sorry, subtracting a negative. So here we have negative four. We add the opposite. So you can see here negative four minus negative seven becomes negative four plus seven because when we add the opposite, it becomes plus a positive number. A lot of you have seen something like this, maybe. Let me just say, add the positive. Same thing. So they have different signs. We subtract 7 minus 4 is 3. Take the sign of the larger number. In this case, it's plus, so positive 3. And you can do very something very similar for this last one. Add 
the opposite. So the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2, and there's your answer 3. So let's get into um, multiplying and dividing. With multiplication if uh, and division, if two things that are being multiplied or divided have the same signs, your answer is always going to be positive. So very quickly, for example, uh, 10, 11, 12, and 13, you can see that both of these have the same sign. That's a positive 4 and a positive 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. It's also positive. But even when they're both negative, negative 5 and negative 4, uh, we still get a positive result. So we can multiply 5 times 4 and get 20, but negative times negative is a positive 20. And something very similar for dividing. You can divide 20 by 5 and get 4. You can divide negative 20 by negative 5 and get 4. So when they have different signs, when the two things you're multiplying have different signs, then the answer will be negative. So in each of these examples, uh, 14 and 15, you can see one number is positive, one number is negative. We have a positive 6 in the first example, a positive 3 in the second example. And if they have opposite signs, then they will just multiply to be a negative answer. And so this is always fun. It doesn't matter when you're dividing if the uh, negative is in the bottom or the top. Uh, that will be negative. So 9 divided by 9 is 1, but it's got to be negative because this 9 and this 9 have opposite signs. And the same thing here. So negative 9 divided by positive 9 is, in fact, still negative 1. Let me pull this up here. So we have absolute value and exponents, and that will uh, conclude this video. I'll do this order of operations here in another video. So absolute value and exponents. So absolute value uh, is the distance from zero, and essentially it always has to be a positive number. Distance. So for example, if you drive uh, from Houston, where I'm teaching, all the way up to every Texan's favorite city, Dallas, you drive, I don't know, 300 miles. But when you drive back from Dallas to Houston, you don't drive negative 300 miles. You still drive a positive 300 miles. Those miles, that distance gets added to the odometer in the car. So distance uh, is always positive. That's why when you look at these answers, the absolute value of 4 is 4, and the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. But there's something going on over here with example 20. That negative here is the reason this answer is negative here. So the absolute value of 4, negative 4, which we just talked about right here, you can see this is uh, a positive 4. But this negative negates it. That's why we have a negative 4. And lastly here, we have um, exponents. And much like multiplication, it's just repeated addition. Exponents represent repeated multiplication. With repeated multiplication, um, the little 2 here is what we would call the exponent. And the 3 down here is what we would call the base. Now, mind you, this notation when you use Microsoft Word is a little awkward. Uh, it's easier when we're writing everything out, uh, paper and pencil or digitally writing things out, to push that exponent up a little higher. So you'll have to take my word for it. This is 3 to the second power. And yes, we have some special names here for when we use exponents. If your exponent is 2, we can say 3 squared. If you have an exponent 3, we would say 3 cubed. 3 cubed, that's what this is. But anything past that is to the 4th power, to the 5th power, to the 6th power. So even if you just say... 3 to the second power or 3 to the third power and don't remember that it is squared or cubed, 
you'll be fine. You know that it's a power or an exponent. So all it means is that we have to write down the base this many times. So we write the base 3 twice, and then we multiply it together. Pretty simple. 3 times 3 is 9. The next example here, we have parentheses. So everything in this set of parentheses is going to get written twice. So in parentheses, negative 3. In another set of parentheses, negative 3. Right? Our base is negative 3, exponent 2. Write out this base twice, multiply those together, positive 9. Remember way back here, way up here? If the uh, signs are the same, the answer will be positive when we're multiplying. Cool. Now this last one is usually what gets people. This negative is not in parentheses with 3. So when you write this out, you will not write the negative in parentheses with a 3. It'll be way out front. And what this represents is it is a negative 1 times 3 times 3. So no matter how you multiply this out, normally the students like to do the 3 times 3 first and get 9. And since they have the same sign, this is a positive 9. But then we have to still multiply this by negative 1. 9 times negative 1, they have opposite signs, so the answer will be negative 9. And I want to go back very briefly to this example back here. Um, this is something very similar that's happening that I mentioned with the minus 1, the negative 1 being multiplied here. We could think of this as a negative 1 being multiplied to the absolute value of negative 4. And so I sort of just kind of glossed over that idea at the beginning. Uh, if you understood it the first way, cool. And that concludes the first part for uh, the notes for assignment 1 in ABS. Right about now, you should be seeing a little video pop up on the screen that will lead you to the second portion of notes that will cover the order of operations.